Yeah. Stay off in the storms. No snow here. It's a shame. For those of you who got it, yeah, I understand, but I, I really love the snow. Not that I can ski anymore, my skiing days are now over, my knee won't let me do it. But I used to love uh, used to love the old skiing. Never got taught to ski properly. Uh, my first uh, experience on skis was uh, standing behind what they called a BV206, which is sort of like a, a military, sort of like a snowmobile sort of thing. Lines coming off the back of it, toggles on along the lines, and then you put your skis on. And you see that you the toggle, you stand there in line, and off it goes. It's supposed to do about 10 mile an hour, but you normally end up with some sort of like jockey who think it's fun to put his boot down and you do 40 mile an hour. We took them on this uh, vehicle over, well, not rough terrain, but yeah, it's normally ended up in a big pile on the on the floor but yeah so that, that was my first experience of skiing and then the rest of it was just that cool and going out with the lads and stuff no snow here and it's just uh, still bitterly cold two degrees and you can see Jake's in his wheels happy as Larry Hey, you're going to get caught on the lines, mate. Go on then, Jake. Come on, mate. Come on. They're just looking at you because you're in your wheels. See you back at home by the pond. So, a couple of deliveries uh, turned up in the week when I was away. Uh, that one looks a bit nasty. And uh, the second one, my missus opened it. Uh, so, first of all, there's a nice waterberry and apple car smelly, which I'll put in in a minute. Smells nice. It's a Nescafe. A PG Tips. A candy cane, which will hang on the Christmas tree. My favourite biscuits in the world, this coffee. So bad for you. Nearly 100% sugar. And this was all sent by AMC Koi. Chris and Ash. Oh, and some chocolates, which I'm surprised are still there, actually. Uh, my darling lady wife. So cheers, Chris and Ash. Much, much appreciated. Uh, I do like the mug, actually. So that's another one to add to the collection. These are all being stored away until I redo my um, fish shed. Well, it's not a fish shed, shed, shed yet. It's a shed where I put my fishing stuff, my fish stuff, and my tools and bits and pieces. So once I redo that, then I'll put a little shelf up in there. And actually some of them I do use, but yeah, brilliant. So I guess that's Chris. And then all this is Ash. <laughs> the, there was also a couple of smellies. Um, and as you can see, uh, my, Lady wife has already used them, so, uh, or using them, I should say. So, Darby Coy, Andy, 
yeah that's what they are you per i'll show you again try and walk slowly so what you need is one of these you put a little tea light in there and you drop your little block of wax on top and then uh, you light the little tea light it melts the wax and then it gives off beautiful fragrances in the room but yeah once again cheers guys much appreciated and uh Who don't love a good mug and then the second box remember i was speaking to you last week Let's try and get it all out this will bubble wrapped up nicely See if you can focus on that. So, Lincoln to Fifth Shelf Laboratories Research LPH Bio Dips. And I'll get that open in a minute and I'll show you. So, in the package, there are two waterborne bacteria test kits. I don't open it yet until they're ready to use it. So, basically, you get two, so you can do one. And then once you check the results, see if you've got sort of like a moderate to high, high readings, so you can treat your pond. And then after sort of like treatment period expired, you can use the second one just to double check, make sure you got rid of it. So, um, brief description, I'll sort of like bring that in there. So, uh, LFH biodips assess the presence and level of bacteria in fish pond water. These gel plates are sensitive to specific fish pathogens and will not react to the numerous commensal or harmless waterborne bacteria and other organisms that are part of the pond biology. Dips are supplied as a pack or two so the reading can take them before and after the use of a pond medication to ascertain how effective it has been. The biodip should be left unopened until use and the tab that opens the tube should not be touched as this may allow air into the mini incubation tube. When ready to take the dip, remove the gel plate, expose it to pond water for 30 to 35 seconds at an elbow's depth. Ooh, bit chilly for that this time of year, but good job I'm heated. Then incubate for approximately three days at 35 degrees or in the warmest place possible. So that'd be the airing cupboard, I guess. Time will vary with the water temperature when the dip was taken. The time will vary when the water temperature, with the water temperature when the dip was taken. The plates below indicate levels of harmful bacteria with a low reading or totally pink plate take no action. But if high, the fish are healthy. If high, but the fish are healthy, carry out small frequent water changes and monitor pond hygiene. If a high level results the same time as the fish shows sign of disease, a treatment may be required. And there's a little comparison chart just at the bottom there. So basically, what I'm going to do later on is take that, open it out, dip that in the water. So I've got to lean in and take it down to elbows depth in the water for 30-35 seconds. Take it out, put it back into the tube, and then put it in the warmest place you can think of in the house. So it needs to be about 30 to 35 degrees. <sighs> Can't really think of anywhere that hot. I suppose the airing cupboard's gonna be the warmest place in my house. So we'll give it a go later on. See how we get on with it. And uh, fingers crossed, I ain't got anything. Like I said, after speaking to Paula last week, um, we saw in the video and that lot she reassured me that she doesn't think it's anything bacterial but i'd already ordered these so um we'll try them out anyway just to be on the safe side and at least uh anybody out there who is concerned or think they might be suffering a waterborne bacterial issue and you can see how these work and um you know possibly try them out for yourself you know they're available direct from lincolnshire fish health or the other place I've got them from, uh, you can get them from, you know, the only other place I know that is, is um, from Koi Logic. Uh, so I'll put links to both these places down below. Um, and like I said, it's about £5 for two. So, 
you know, it's not breaking the bank. All right, so I'm gonna go out, grab me um, shopping that I take away with me to work, and then I'll be out of the pond, hoovering the leaves off first to start with, and uh, do my filter clean, do a dip, and uh, we'll have a little look at the fish again. Uh, I don't know where I'm gonna do the camera. I'm running out of time again already. Had a lie in this morning. <laughs> after the wind and rain and god knows what yesterday and the power being out for most of the day i do need to check on the fish properly actually because the power was out for about four and a half nearly five hours yesterday um pond didn't drop though um as soon as the power came back on i went out to make sure that the everything was back on and running okay and i checked the temperatures and by the pond temperature and it dropped to 17. Uh, it's set at 18 at the moment, it drops to 17 and it normally drops to about 17 before it comes back on anyway and heats up. So yeah, me out of school with, just got back in with Jake. Anyway, so catch you uh, guys in a minute. So suited and booted, outside, just doing my pond maintenance. Uh, as you can probably hear, filter's gurgling away and uh obviously because i'm still feeding filters still need cleaning regular as clockwork so there's still a lot of dirty water in there and uh, for those of you who's not covered obviously if you've got leaves and stuff in there i mean that's gonna mean extra cleaning out as well as uh, all the leaves are falling but fish are okay um not sure if i'll turn the uv back on let me just spin you around a minute uh, so I'll just zoom in a bit there, I can't see the water's going a bit murky. Uh, so I've had the UV off for a couple of weeks now. So it might be a case of, because there's a bit of glare, a bit of heat, it might be getting a bit of algae bloom going on. So um, obviously the leaves are still finding their way in a little bit, I don't think they would, but they are. Not as bad as what they've been, they've been uncovered. Just the old uh, acer after the storms we had yesterday is uh, near enough there. And the paper tree, uh, paper bush I should say, Japanese paper bush, you can see all the leaves have wilted. Then they're dropping one by one. But as I mentioned before, you just see zoom uh, in there. My finger in there. Uh, no, I'm gonna push it out of zoom. So you can just see the buds there. They will stay on. All the leaves will drop off, and there'll just be the bark and those buds on the end there. And they'll stay there all winter until spring, until they open up into little yellow flowers. But anyway, back to the fishes. Everybody really seems to be doing fine. I'm going to do the uh, bacteria test anyway. So I've got no ulcers, no thin rot, no nothing. It's just the uh, the veininess and the little bit, bit of pinky pinky look to um, me Tancho Sankey and uh, Tancho Shoa and uh, my Fleury. Um And Chad has a bit of pink hair, so they're all. But as I said to you, every day is a school day, they're going through hormonal changes at the moment. And that can, uh, especially on female fish and on the whiter varieties, it can make them go a bit, get zany and a bit pink. But I'll get the uh, test kit out in a second and I'll dip that. And we'll go take it somewhere nice and warm. So it can gestate and do its business. Get the filter on a clean. Bubbling away. That's the second bubble I'm on. But yeah, everything's looking good. Apart from the garden, it's all dying. Winter's here. So I've got me a little testy thing. I'll hold it right up so you can sort of see. And you see just there the sort of like the yellowy colour thing. That's sort of like a gel plate and that contains all the sort of like the goodness that the bacteria likes to grow on. So 
So basically, I've got to dip that in the water about elbow deep. Now, hopefully, if I ain't got to stick my arm in, I should be able to use my grabbers just to dip that in, hold it there for 30, 35 seconds, and excuse the noise of the hoover, and then um, bring it back out. So, spin you around, I'll get my grabbies, and uh, hopefully you can see it go in. I can't believe that, I didn't bloody press start on the camera when I've done it. Anyway, so I've dipped it um, in the water for about 35 seconds. So now I've just got to go store this somewhere nice and warm, which I'm guessing is in the airing cupboard. I think I'll wrap it up in a bit of a towel or something like that, just to try and keep it ultra warm. And uh, come back, well, I'm back to work tomorrow. So whether I get home during the week or not is another matter. I might ask my missus to come up and uncover it and have a look. But yeah, three days time. This being the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, We'll have a look at it, hopefully, and we'll uh, see what's occurring, as they say in Wales. Right, take this upstairs, and get it hid away. So, tuck that way in a towel, put it way up in the uh, air and cupboard. I'm just filling up the bird feeders. There's uh, the old sort of like suet uh, pellets, so it's full of fat and berries and that lot the time of year and some high protein mealworm which uh, I don't feed to the fish but I should imagine it's perfectly okay oh excuse me so put some fat balls into uh, that one there and then the feeder is you can't see it Oh, there it is. The feeder's up there, so that's all done. Filter is all clean, just got to fill it up. And then I've got to clean out. Oh, sorry. It makes people dizzy doing that too fast. But, yeah, the garden's starting to look a mess. Ferns obviously sort of stay, some of them die back. Yeah, but yeah, expose the uh, skimmer. You can tell where the water is. I'm going to have to uh, give that four flushes on the Nexus. Uh, it's just bringing up so much crap off the bottom where everything's dying back. Even though you're heated, it's still dying back and the leaves are getting in. But yeah, get this uncovered, give it a clean out, and I'll get back to you in a minute. So I've kept it in a towel. Got it out of the airing cupboard and I kept it in a towel. Uh, so unwrap it and we'll have a little look. Feel a bit like... Um, one of these zombie movies where you're revealing this zombie changing T cells or something like that. A bit, <laughs> am I gonna get zapped? Oh, oh yes. <coughs> so, that to me is a bit of an infestation, and I did think there was something. So, I put that down there. So, compare that to the chart, I bet I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you could say that's a fairly hefty infestation. So, uh, I have to give it a bit of a chloramin tea, I think, in there. I mean, it's not mega it's not you know it's sort of like a medium infestation according to the chart let's go get the chart and have a look but yeah well like i said in some ways like i said that shows you um that they work oh, both sides oh yeah so, yeah, I think that's going to have to be a case of uh, chloramine tea. And uh, give it a check after I chloramine teed it. Like I say, the fish ain't showing no signs of infection, which is a good thing. Um, but, yeah, I obviously have to put the underwater camera down and keep a check on them. But, yeah, I'll get some chloramine tea 
and all ordered up give it a dose and then we'll check it again with the second test kit well like i said they work and i'll post a link down to below uh, to where you can get these from be interesting to see if uh, anybody else uh, gives these a go and uh, finds the same shocked shocked and stunned but glad i brought them all right okay guys just go get the uh, chart and uh, we'll compare catch you in a minute so that's the chart sorry get out of the light and there's me specimen you know i'm trying to work out High, moderate, high. Well, I'm going to go with high, but what it says here is, um, we went through this before, um, with a low reading on totally pink plate, take no action, but if if high, but the fish are healthy, which they are, carry out small frequent water changes and monitor pond hygiene. Okay, well, we know I'm working away and I'm not doing the filter cleans as often as I should be, so that might be the problem. Or it might be the, uh, well, I've cut back on the feed now, so things should be good. If a high level results at the same time as the fish show signs of disease, treatment may be required. Well, they're not showing any signs of the disease. So, um, we'll have to uh, up the water changes, I think. So I'll sort out my trickle in, trickle out and uh, we'll see what happens. So um, I sent Dr. Paula Reynolds an, an email with uh, the uh, photo of the uh, of the tester uh, of Duncus. Although it looked like a heavy infestation, when I was looking at the pictures on the instructions, it was showing sort of like large, big blobs, sort of like for a heavy infestation, whereas I had lots of little small circles all over the slide and um, very quickly she emailed me straight back um, which I was quite surprised how fast she came back to me saying um, because I explained you know heated what temperature I was heated to um, how how I'd stored the uh, test kit for how long because it's sort of like three and a half days rather than three days so extra half day on it and she come back and said um, yeah the colour of the test kit also gives away sort of like what sort of type of bacteria it is um, and because I'm heated the chances are it will keep reproducing um, but um, her advice is uh, if the fish are healthy uh, with no signs of um, bacterial infection um, just to uh, sort of like maybe increase the water changes and carry on and with that sort of um, level everything's sort of like you know nothing to be too concerned about so <laughs> happy days um but i've got to say those test kits are definitely the dogs uh you know definitely worth not so much keeping in your um, arsenal i suppose because as i said they are um time sensitive uh they don't um you can't sort of buy them and store them and keep them because they don't work that way so it's one of those things that you if you think you're going to have a problem or you think you've got a problem to um actually sort of like order them and like i said you know five pound for two it, it doesn't break the bank and um so where it goes well what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the camera down again the old underwater camera just double check the fish make sure they're okie dokie um i'm going to increase me water um, they trickle in, trickle out because what I have, because I'm on a meter and it costs an absolute fortune when I had it trickling in 24 hours, 24 7. Um, I think uh, my water bill was about 700 quid for six months, and uh, it hurt a little bit. So, what I, did, what I got is um, I've put it on a timer. Um, I don't know if you can see because I've got it in my little box. 
the diff there is um, my control box. Um, that it's got a timer on it, different functions, or you can sort of like uh, bypass the timer, turn the water on uh, for a set period of time, two hours, three hours, and that lot. So I have it come on once a day for about two hours. Um, I'm going to double that, uh, see if that makes a difference. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll order some uh, chloramine tea in anyway, um, just in case water changes don't get rid of it. I definitely, I mean, we don't. I know it's not doing any harm to the fish, but um, I'd rather get it in and uh, get rid of it. So I'll try this first. I'll have to play around with that. Um, that's controls there and uh, I'll sort that out. All right. So, change that over. So that is um, coming on twice a day now um, for cut three hours at a time. Uh, I know it don't sound a lot to you people that do 24 seven or run recycle RO, but like I said, the old water bills, got to think about them and also think about the environment. Yeah. So, um, yeah, got the underwater camera. Gonna get that in, have a quick look, have a check on the fish, make sure everything's okay. So, here we go. Camera going down. And there we go, so, uh, straight away. Usual suspects coming up thinking it's food. Feed me, feed me. But yeah, uh, just looking around. There's one of the Adam Buyer growing shows. Just trying to see if the camera can get. So yeah, so there's one of the ones that was showing signs of uh, hormone change. Uh, Chad. Camera's above him and he's uh, looking for food. Yeah, below him I should say, and he's at the top looking for food. Well, I can't see any obvious signs of um, anything. Um, so, you know, just have a quick scoot around. You know, like I said, there don't seem to be any ray scales, uh, no ulcers showing no red patches or anything like that so yeah so um, I'll just try out the water changes see if that uh, dilutes uh, dilutes bacteria down I'll do that for a week and then I'll run the bacteria test kit again uh, next week you got to use them within a certain time I can't remember exactly what it is in fact I don't think it says but like it says they are time sensitive um, pieces of uh, equipment I suppose um so yeah i'll try that i'll run the extra water trickle in trickle out for a week and uh see where that gets me on the um count uh hopefully if it lowers it then um we should be good to go carry on like that for a little while but yeah everything looks good coming up periscope depth so yeah Oh, it's good. So that's the underwater footage done. I'll do a talk over on that. Uh, well, I have done talk over on that. So, but yeah. So, hopefully everything's going to look all right, and uh, you'll see in a minute. But anyway, time to do my filters. Give them a clean, and uh, I'm going to go have some soup. Just trying out our new soup maker and uh, anybody ain't got one yet an automatic soup maker get one brilliant pieces of kit make any flavor soup you want in about 20 30 minutes um, from scratch so as the missus just waving at me to say it's ready carrot coriander coconut soup mm -mm -mm. all right it's starting to get dark a bit now anyway so I will catch you guys uh, next time. And uh, remember, stay safe. Get your bush jab if you ain't got your bush jab. And remember, this ain't a hobby.
Adventure Lifestyle. See you later.